Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And today starts the new builds for 2023. And the first one to get built is going to be the Agro Shop. Acro Shop. Acro Shop. It's spelled weird. I don't know. But anyway, I picked this up a few weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. I was Christmas shopping and, you know, on Amazon and got sidetracked by a uh, RC-related thing, which then got me down a whole different path. And we ended up at Hub Hobby looking at this. Yeah, it, I told you, I get distracted by being distracted an awful lot. So, anyway, i had been looking for this for quite a while. They had one in stock. I could not resist it. And... I really want to build it. So we're starting off 2023 with this. As in usual, I will get all the parts laid out and, you know, let you guys see what's in the kit. And then I'm going to start building. I'll take some pictures along the way, put them up as a montage, and then we'll come back once we have it looking at least a little bit more like that. All right guys, so we have the truck built and wheels and tires on and the body is trimmed out, ready to go. So a couple things is obviously these are not the tires from the kit. Um, they're they're on-road tires. So what I did is I borrowed <laughs> the tires off of the um, King Cab and basically they're Blitzer Beetle wheels and tires. So what I did is I just put the regular tires that came on the, from the kit on the wheels and swap these out for what I had on the um, King Cab. So these will work a whole lot better on my track in the grass. Um, they're actually a little bit bigger so it should get a little bit more speed and they're a little bit softer so it will also help off-road soaking up some of the impacts with the tires and not the suspension. Um, anyway the body went on fine. Um, the little wing, make sure you don't mess that up because it's actually, when the mold is done, the wing is actually back here. So you have to be careful when you cut off the excess um, that you don't cut through your wing. Uh, so the only other thing I did was I moved the body post uh, mounts up one hole. Yeah. So in the front they had uh, three open holes and in the rear they had four open holes. I just moved those up one because basically the body was hitting on the front shock tower and the rear shock tower the way they have it in the manual. So I just raised one of those up each and we are ready to get some paint on here. So I gotta get the body washed up, I gotta get the masking on, mask off the bed area, and then we can spray it with the gunmetal and then we'll come back and back it with black. Um, hopefully it won't darken it up. I may shoot it with the gunmetal and then back it with silver so it's a little bit brighter and then come back and back it all in black and paint the bed section. Uh, this gets gunmetal as well. And then should be ready to go. So I did want to point out one thing I did to make life a little bit easier and work with this Hobby Wing ESC a little bit better. So in the manual it obviously shows the traditional big switch that these kits come with. And it has the rubber boot and it mounts back here with the two screws and everything. Well, the new switch on the Hobby Wings don't work like that. So thankfully you can use a little piece of double-sided tape, stick it down. And then what I did is I actually ran a zip tie through the screw hole 
back around and then out the other screw hole and then took the another zip tie and slid that up. So basically you're making this big U-shaped strap and you can tighten it up and keep that switch nice and tight to the front. That way you can turn it on and off as many times as you want. That tape won't wiggle loose and the tape just kind of is holding it there until you get the zip tie on there. Now you may have to take a small drill bit or the end of your hobby knife and ream out those holes just a tiny bit to get your zip tie through depending on what you use. Um, I don't usually use the white zip ties that come with the kits because they stand out so much. Um, I don't like seeing them. So I usually buy really thin black zip ties. You know, they kind of blend in much better and, you know, not as obvious as a big white zip tie. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's the only thing, a modification that I did. Everything else is stock other than the tires. So everything is built kind of the way it shows in the manual. And, you know, it's got that nice flop to it. Um, sounds really nice. So, if you run it with the dog bone, with the arms droop, the dog bones do kind of bobble around a little bit. You can see the back wheels moving. Just pick it up and nice and smooth. And when you're driving it, you're not going to be driving it at full ride height. They do sag down so they don't, you know, you're not going to be rattling. Um, diff's a little stiff and I wanted it that way. Um, I wanted a little bit more positive bite with this, especially with these big rear tires um, on here compared to the uh, Neo Fighter and the uh, Racing Fighter. This has a little bit more, you know, rear tire to it. So if one tire picks up, you know, it's going to want to diff out really quick. So I did pack this diff full of the ceramic grease and tried to, you know, quiet it up. But, you know, everything's working well. Sounds good. Sounds nice and smooth. And... Just got to get some paint on it. So I will be back in a minute. So here it is. It's the final form. And I have to say, this is one sharp looking truck. Um, the decals on here, you really have to be like right up on it to appreciate it. They've got a nice cool pattern to them. Um, like this black piece back here is almost like snake skin. Um, you got the chrome on here. There's a little bit of chrome accent in the grill. And these lower rockers. I don't know if I can get that, but <clears throat> it looks fantastic. Now, the body is a little bit higher than what it calls for in the book. It should go down about two clicks on the um, body posts, but running these taller tires with these spikes on them, um, I noticed that at full lock, if the compresses, it will just catch at this height. At, at the lower height, it was rubbing a whole lot more. So I decided, let's just pick the body up two notches. Um, and with this, I don't even have to cut the body posts. You know, I only have one hole showing here and I have two holes showing in the back, but you know, it's right there at the height of the bed. So I don't have these big, you know, spikes sticking out. So I didn't have to cut them off. So painting the body, um, you really have to be gentle with this gunmetal gray. Um, it's got a lot of metallic in it and you just have to, you wanna make sure your body is clean, 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 clean. Any little spot on the body of a thumbprint or anything is gonna show up in this. So you wanna make sure your body is good and clean. So wash it down, get it nice and clean, put some gloves on, put the stickers on the windows to mask them off and then immediately spray it. Now, don't go heavy handed with the spray paint. Um, you'll get odd little shapes and patterns and any type of run is gonna ampl be amplified by this gunmetal color. So sneak up on this color, you know, give it a mist, come back, give it two or three good light coats and then you can kind of go a little bit heavier on there to get it to where it's, you know, opaque and you can't see through it. Um, so I don't know, I probably got six, seven coats on this, um, and then took the masking off the bed, painted that black, and kind of, I also painted the rest of it black too, um, lightly, just to make sure that, you know, there wasn't a difference between this section and, like, up here in the, the gray. Um... Now, it doesn't say so in the book, but I took the wing and painted that to gunmetal, so it kind of blends in. When it's painted underneath and you're just looking at the paint, 
it's somewhere between the shiny metallic gunmetal and the shiny black bed. So it's it works perfectly. And then it has the chrome sticker on top with the Tamiya sticker over top of that. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, painting that is, I just stuck it to a stick. Um, now, when you're painting that, I left the window, the, the overspray film on it. And I wrote overspray film. <laughs> that way, if you could read it, you're painting it the wrong way around. You have to flip it over so all the letters are reversed. Paint that side. It's a good tip. I didn't do it, but I have done it. <laughs> um, but by masking that off, you know, I got a really nice, pretty um, coloration on the bottom. And then the top was nice and clean so I could stick that sticker right to it and didn't have any trash or overspray or anything on that. Um, the decals do take a little bit of patience. So cut these big long ones off on the side, cut those all the way out. What I did is I snipped the bottom corner down here, got that, got the whole decal lined up, pressed that bottom corner on, and then I peeled it back. And then I actually got about half of the decal um, backing cut off, laid that down, and then peeled the rest of it up and pulled the backing out and stuck the rest of the sticker down. You could do it with the soapy water method, um, but if you're just patient and get this one lined up on both sides, pretty much everything falls back into place. Now, <clears throat> these going across the hood, there is a little bit of gap in between, and like I cut everything out perfectly and I left it to where there's a little tiny line of body color showing through there. It It's not the same decal. So this is like a flat gray and this is like a patterned gray up on the roof, on the, on the hood area. So I wouldn't try to match those up because it's not going to look the same anyway. I would try to leave that nice body line in there and kind of the same thing. There's a, a gap on the hood here that's intentional. Um, these actually do overlap. So basically I just ran off of this inside curve and the back edge of this stuck one, stuck the other over top of it and it overlaps nicely. Um, but yeah, it just take your time with it and it will look fantastic. And I cannot wait to get out running. So the weather here has been nutty. So what happened was it rained for two or three days and then it just went and froze solid and it didn't unthaw until the later part of this week so the ground was hard as a rock but it had this layer of mud on top of it uh, it was just soaking wet dirt on top of frozen ground and you know you couldn't drive anything on that um, and then now that it's thaw Everything is soaking wet. We got more rain on top of that, so it's wet. And, you know, it's raining again. Anyway, the weather has not been cooperating around here. It's been frozen solid or raining or both. Um, we had one day where the ground was still frozen, but it was pouring down rain. And I had this huge monstrosity of a puddle right outside of my garage. So, um, for right now... This is just going to be the build video. Um, I'm not going to take it out. I don't want to get it all muddy and nasty and then have to spend three hours cleaning it. So for right now, build video alone. We'll get a running video later on. As soon as it stops raining, I will take some pictures and end this off with some nice still pictures for you guys to at least see the buggy up close. Truck. Stadium truck, I guess it is. So everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe. As always, I hope everybody's off to a great start of the new year. I know I am. This was an awesome build. And everybody out there, I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.